Hey, what's up everybody? So in this video series, I'm going to show you what I would do if I was just getting into programming and I wanted to learn my first programming language and begin building web applications and do all that on my own by myself. So as you can see here, I'm at learn to program uh, at pine.fm. This is actually a website version of a book that you can buy by an author named Chris Pine. Um, I'm sure there's a link in here somewhere to buy the full version, but he has, I think he, I think he has all of it on the website uh, for free. And then you can buy like a paperback edition uh, if you want something to carry around with you or read on your commute to work, things like that. Um, so this is the book that I used and many of my students have used to learn how to program uh, with the Ruby programming language. So I'll just do a quick review of it and kind of show you what they've got going on here. So the website here I'll put in the description and then once you're here you go down to getting started and this is chapter zero. Uh, of course you'll learn that in programming uh, counting always starts at zero and he'll talk about why that is. So here's his introduction. He actually has installation instructions for Windows for Macintosh and for Linux, which is really nice. So this is where I would start getting Ruby set up on whatever operating system you're using. That's the first section getting started. That'll get you set up with Ruby on your computer. The first chapter, which is actually the second chapter, it's called Numbers. And basically, Chris is gonna teach you all about using numbers in the Ruby programming language, which is really important. And so you may be thinking like, oh, math, I hate math, or I wasn't good at math in high school or middle school or college or whatever. If anything, programming makes it to where any math that you need to do is essentially automated. So you might need to remember like your basic algebraic stuff, like, you know, the PEMDAS stuff, uh, parentheses, exponents, uh, multiplication, division, subtraction, addition, etc. Not a big deal if you're not great at math. I'm not that great at math and I've never had a problem with it in my programming career. So he's just going to show you how you deal with that specific data type, which is numbers. So he's got some good explanations of how to use things, how to create your first Ruby file, and then how uh, he actually has at the bottom a few things to try, which are some exercises, which if you're learning exercises are like bread and butter to being able to take what you've just learned and apply it immediately so that you can get the practice that you need to be able to get better at whatever it is you're learning. Okay, so going on to the third chapter, which is chapter two, letters. That's what he's calling letters, words, text, and he'll, he'll get more into that. But basically, if you've ever done any type of programming before, he's talking about strings. And it's just dealing with characters inside of quotations, kind of like uh, sentences or words or paragraphs. Uh, and you'll learn more about how all that works in this chapter. So in the next one, variables and assignment. This is also very crucial to learning how to program, is learning about variables and how to assign things to variables. And you can see these chapters are really short. So I mean, you can, you can move through this book really quickly and get the basics of Ruby down and begin programming code within your first day of learning how to program. We'll just go through the rest of these real quick. Mixing it up, he's kind of getting numbers, letters, and variables, all the things that you've learned in the last three chapters, and he's putting them all together and showing you how they all get connected. And then he's teaching you about methods, uh, which you'll learn more about. And then we'll just go through these here on the left. Flow control, arrays and iterators, writing your own methods, classes, which is actually a pretty advanced topic, uh, blocks and procs, which is even more advanced. And then at the very end, chapter 12, or what he's calling 11, beyond this tutorial. So he shows you some other resources, uh, some things that you can get involved in, like some mailing lists and whatnot. And you can even get in touch with him, I believe. Yep, he's got his email on there in case you have any questions or concerns, anything like that. So this is a super valuable resource. In my opinion, this is like the bread and butter to getting started with the basics of Ruby. And the great thing about it is it's free. So uh, in this series, I'm going to be going through this, explaining each section alongside uh, using Chris's book as a resource. So you can be reading his stuff, making sense of it as you're reading it, and then watching the videos and seeing me explain. And I'll even try to come up with some exercises um, for each chapter of the book. That way you can have even more stuff to practice with. So that is the basics of Ruby for free from Chris Pine. 
uh, or you can buy his book if you want to support him, which it's a couple bucks and then you get a book that you can carry around with you. Uh, moving on to Rails. Do you need to know more about Ruby before moving on to Rails? No. Uh, I would highly recommend reading through Learn to Program front to back before moving on to Rails. And even if you don't understand everything in the book, you can still move on to Rails. You just need kind of that base background of Ruby before getting into Rails where you're going to be seeing Ruby left and right and you're like, ah, oh, what is this stuff? It's good knowing what a number is or a variable is or a class before going into Rails and then you're going to see a ton of that stuff and you'll be able to point it out and say, oh, that looks familiar. I remember learning about that. And you don't have to know, oh, okay, well, that's what that does and that's what that does. That stuff will come with time. It's just you don't want to not know Ruby at all, start learning Rails, which people do that. I don't know why, but they do. Uh, and then just be you know thrown out in the water trying to swim like, oh, what is all this stuff? You definitely want to have a little bit of a background, and this book gives you that. So once you have finished doing these tutorials, then go ahead and move on to Rails. And I'll show you a free resource that you can use that will teach you everything you know need to know about the basics of Ruby on Rails.